Hello students and welcome to Crop Science 6049. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at cell division with the main focus on mitosis. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to describe the cell cycle, describe the process of mitosis, and explain the significance of mitosis in crop production. Now let's look at cell division. What is cell division? Cell division is the process in which the parent cell divides, eventually giving rise to new daughter cells. Cells may divide for several reasons, and there are two types of cell division depending on the purpose. Cell division associated with sexual reproduction is one type called meiosis. And the other type of cell division associated with growth and cell replacement or repair is called mitosis. Before digging into mitosis, let's take a look at the cell cycle. The cell cycle is the process a cell undertakes to replicate all its material and divide into two identical cells. It is made up of interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. Let's take a look at interphase, which is the first part of the cell cycle. Interphase is divided into the G1, the S, and the G2. About 90% of a cell's time in the normal cell cycle may be spent in the interphase. G1 phase, it is the period prior to the synthesis of DNA. In this phase, the cell increases in mass as organelles double or are synthesized in preparation for cell division. The G1 phase is also known as the first gap phase. Now let's look at the S phase. The S phase is the period during which DNA is synthesized or replicated. In most cells, there is a narrow window of time during which DNA is synthesized. The S stands for synthesis. G2 phase is the period after DNA synthesis has occurred, but prior to the start of prophase. The cell synthesizes proteins and energy stores as the cell continues to increase in size. The G2 phase is the second gap phase. Now let's get into mitosis. Mitosis is, is the division of the nucleus into two daughter nuclei that are genetically identical to one another and to their parent nucleus. Its function is to construct an exact copy of each chromosome and then distribute identical set of chromosomes to each of the daughter cells. It consists of the stages prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. It is the shortest period of the cell cycle, lasting 10 to 15 percent. Now let's look at prophase. And during prophase, the following events occur. The chromosomes, they become visible as long, thin, tangled threads. Each duplicated chromosome is seen as a pair of sister chromatids joined by the duplicated but unseparated centromere. The nucleolus disappears during prophase. In the cytoplasm, the mitotic spindle consisting of microtubules and other proteins forms from microtubule organizing centers and not from two pairs of centrioles as in animals, since plant cells do not have centrioles or centrosomes. So this is a very important point to note that plant cells, they do not have centrioles, but they have microtubule organizing centers. In the late prophase, sometimes also called prometaphase, the following events occur. The chromosomes finish condensing and become very compact. The nuclear envelope breaks down, releasing the chromosomes. Kinetical, which are specialized regions in the centromeres of chromosomes, attach to a type of a microtubule called kinetical fiber. The chromosomes begin to migrate towards the cell center. Now let's take a look at metaphase. During metaphase, the following events occur. The spindle fully develops. Chromosomes align at the metaphase plate. Chromosomes become attached to certain spindle fibers on the centromere. 
Towards the end of metaphase, contraction of spindle fibers draw individual chromosomes slightly apart. Now let's take a look at anaphase. During anaphase, the following events occur. The paired centromeres in each distinct chromosome begin to move apart. Once the paired sister chromatids separate from one another, each is considered a full chromosome. They are referred to as daughter chromosomes. Due to the shortening of spindle fibers, the daughter chromosomes move to the poles at opposite ends of the cell. The daughter chromosomes migrate centromere first and the kinetical fibers become shorter as the chromosomes approaches a pole. Now let's take a look at telophase. During telophase, the following events occur. Chromatids reach their respective poles. Nuclei begin to form at opposite poles. New nuclear envelope form around each group of chromatids. Spindle fibers disintegrate. Nucleoli also reappear. Chromatin fibers of chromosomes and coil and become invisible again. Now let's take a look at cytokinesis, which is the last part of the cell cycle. Cytokinesis is a process in which the cytoplasm of a single cell divides to form two daughter cells and the following events occur during cytokinesis. After the plant cell separates, the sister chromatids and build new nuclear membranes to create two nuclei, it divides its cytoplasm into two parts by forming new plasma membrane and cell wall down the middle of the cell. The cytoskeleton moves small vesicles containing cell wall material into a line in the middle of the cell. The vesicles fuse together, bringing together the vesicle membrane and the wall material that was inside the vesicle. The vesicle membrane forms the new plasma membrane for each cell. The wall material joins together to form the cell plate. The two new cells then secrete cellulose and other material to build a primary cell wall on the other side of the cell plate, which is now called the middle lamella. Now let's take a look at the importance of mitosis in crop production. Plants reproduce vegetatively by mitosis. We've got a lot of plants, for example, we've got potatoes, we've got bananas, and we've got sweet potatoes. All these plants, they reproduce vegetatively. So without mitosis, these plants may fail to reproduce. It also maintains genetic stability. The daughter cells formed during mitosis are genetically uniform and identical to the parent cell as well as to each other. Mitosis helps in preserving and maintaining genetic stability of a particular plant population. It is also important for growth. Mitosis helps in increasing the number of cells in, in plants, thereby playing a significant role in the growth of plants. It is also important for replacement and regeneration of new cells. Regeneration and replacement of worn out and damaged tissues is very important function of mitosis. Mitosis helps in the production of identical copies of cells and thus helps in the repairing of damaged tissue or replacing the worn out cells. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, additions and subtractions, please write them in the comment section. If you have benefited from this video, click the like button.